What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these ad uh, wallpaper poster type things. Um, essentially the effect I'm trying to teach you is first of all like the Lightroom setup and I actually just watched my buddy Baz uh, put out a tutorial um, a couple weeks ago depending on when I post this uh, on a similar thing so I'll link that in the description. Um, but I also want to show you guys how to get like a cool 3D effect that makes the ad pop and come to life. Um, as well as create some like smoky effects and like cool lines that give it a clean look. Um, and just make this look like an attractive advertisement. Um, so I'm just going to go and recreate this one I have here. Um, if this gets 100 likes I'll be sure to put the project files in the description so you guys can have them. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is essentially what I'm starting out with, and actually I'm going to make this black. And the image size, or the canvas size, um, is, I'm do, using 1600 by uh, 882. I mean, it doesn't really matter what the size is, it all depends on what you're doing and what size you need it. Um, but first thing you're going to need to do is either pen tool your product out or get it with a transparent background of some way or some manner. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hide the boot for now. We're just going to focus on the background and all that stuff. And we're going to work our way up from the bottom most layer to the very top layer. So on this black background, I'm going to go command U, um, and I'm going to go to lightness and make that 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on that layer so you get the uh, blending options. And we're going to put a gradient overlay on that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we want to have that on overlay and at 69%. So this, um, this is correct. Uh, I also have it at a scale of 124% um, and negative 90 degree angle. So I'm going to click OK. That's sort of our background. Uh, we want to create a new layer though. And for my product, uh, I have the background as like a purplish because uh, the main part of the spike is like a midnight purple type color. Uh, if you can really even call it that, I don't know really what to call that purple. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make a new layer and command delete and fill it. Then I'm going to double click on it, go to color overlay pick a color and I actually have a color saved here and it's 1F1E24. All right, I'm going to click OK, click OK, then I'm going to right click, rasterize layer style and I'm actually going to save that at, or put that on 70% so the gradient and the dark background show through just a tad. And then we want to kind of create a wall effect. So this is something I saw Baz do in his tutorial as well. Um, and I've seen it throughout um, YouTube in various tutorials because I always like to scout out tutorials and try to not do the same thing other people do. Uh, but this is a common theme and I actually really like it. So I'm going to create a box. I'm going to create a new layer, create a new box. Um, and I'm actually going to move it up a little bit. And this is essentially going to be our like backing wall so I'm gonna to go to my brush I'm gonna have a black selected I'm gonna to go to it get a soft brush put up the size a little bit and about seven eight hundred and I'm gonna barely be touching that box and I'm gonna go hold shift go straight across and then command D and there's sort of our background we can uh, decrease the opacity of this a little bit um, so maybe around 50 and maybe maybe 40 would work yeah <clears throat> excuse me again so I'm gonna keep it at 40 then we're gonna create a new layer this time we want to make sure our colors are black to white uh, if yours aren't you can just click that button right there and we're gonna go to filter render clouds we're gonna set that to overlay and put that on 4% and then we're actually gonna select that layer again and command J to duplicate it. And we're gonna set it to screen this time. Set it uh, just down one to three or yeah, 3%. And then I'm gonna get the eraser tool. Make sure it's a soft brush again. 
and we're gonna increase the size so we erase it all everything in like the middle so about something like that you want to click a few times <clears throat> all right now we want to add uh, the stripes which give it like a texture but it's not like a like a hard texture or anything outrageous um, it's like a clean texture it looks really sleek so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and get a go to the rectangle tool I'm gonna just create a box all the way across my page about what is this like 130 pixels thick you can go a little bigger a little smaller whatever you want um, and I'm gonna uh, press command delete which will fill it with the background color which is white and we're gonna set that to overlay and we're gonna get our eraser tool again and just buff out one side like that <coughs> uh, we're gonna make sure that's on overlay and nine percent and then we can duplicate that and bring it actually it did not duplicate so command J to duplicate and bring it down maybe a little further up maybe just all right, and then Command J again, but this time we're gonna flip it over the other side. So press Command T, right click, horizontal flip, and we'll put it like right here. And maybe just a tad bit. All right, so you can see this gives it like a little bit of a texture um, or like an effect to the background, but um, it still looks very sleek. But we're actually gonna play with it a little more. So I'm gonna go to the original layer, so this top left one. I'm gonna get the erase tool again. This time I'm just gonna decrease the size and I'm actually gonna erase it in a little bit. And then I'm gonna erase it at an angle. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here, but at a different angle. And actually, I don't know if I had the right one selected there. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's erased. And then of course, we wanna do it to the last one. Something like that. All right. So we're gonna create a new layer again, and this time we're gonna add like a thin, uh, a thin stripe, a couple of them, like three again, probably. So go to your brush again. This time we're gonna put it on a hard brush. So hardest at 100, and we're gonna put it at about a three or four size. So I'm gonna go with three. Um, I'm just gonna click, Hold shift and go all the way across. And you can see I accidentally did that in black, but I'm just gonna command I to make it white. All right, then I'm gonna go to my eraser again and make sure the brush is hard. <clears throat> I'm gonna go and let's see, how do I wanna do this? Let's see, let's erase part of it here and let's decrease the size a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click somewhere like there and then decrease the size and go like in the middle here let me just try this again because I didn't like that it was too big of a gap maybe don't decrease it Doom. all right so it's like a long line and then it kind of fades out or just kind of like dwindles out I guess I'm gonna so you can put that behind the spike just a little bit um, and then we're gonna duplicate that again. So Command J and go down and then go right. Maybe move it up. Um, and I'm actually gonna move this first one up to the top like there. And let's duplicate this one now. Command T, right click, flip horizontal, hit enter. And we're gonna bring it over here like that. And we'll set all of these to overlay and about 48% opacity. <clears throat> Excuse me again, guys. All right, now we wanna go to the floor because the floor looks kind of stupid and there's nothing really going on. I know like this picture looks pretty bad right now, but trust me when I say we're gonna get to the good details in a little bit. But we're gonna create a new layer again. This time we're gonna go up to the rectangle marquee tool and select the elliptical marquee tool. And where like the wall and uh, floor meet we want to click there and go to the bottom corner and we want to do command delete again to fill that with white 
Command D to deselect. And we're gonna filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna turn it up so it's quite blurred. Okay, so about 31.7 works. And then we're gonna Command T and bring it down so it's uh, not touching the wall part of this at all. And actually, yeah, that's what we want. And we're gonna set that to overlay and around, we'll go about 60%. And we might have to change this la later on, so I'm actually gonna name that for oval. Just depending, on, if it might stand out a little too much, I might wanna come back to it. All right, now we wanna do a similar thing to create the shadow for the cleat or the product or whatever you're using. So you might have to use different techniques depending on what your um, product is. But I'm going to get the oval tool again and go to like the end of the cleat and make an oval to the front and make it about a width I see fit. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and fill that with black command D to deselect. And I'm going to drag it down a little bit and then filter blur Gaussian blur. And let's see, that might be a little too much. We'll go about 23. I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to set that to 50%. And <clears throat> you might have to play with how low you go and how high you go. Because uh, this will affect like the depth of the product on the page. So uh, I'll stick with that again. And I'm going to name this shadow because it's again something that we might come back to. You might want to name all your layers, but I'm for the tutorial's sake, I'm just kind of going through and showing you everything. Um, as it was when I was creating it. All right, now we wanna create the 3D-ish effect, uh, which in my case is like the splatters on this cleat, which is a really cool, really nice cleat, by the way. Um, so I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna go to my brush tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the brush that fits my product and uh, the design I want to kind of stand out. So it's actually this one called Scratches 3. I'm going to decrease the size a little bit and I'm going to select the green color here and I'm actually going to increase it up a little bit um, and let me make this brush way bigger. All right, it keeps going. Okay, I stopped clicking. Come on. There we go. All right, and I'm going to click like right there and that's lagging pretty bad um, and then you I, since my brush was so big, I can play around and move it where I want, but really I just want like these couple of splatters right in this area in the bottom here. So I'm going to go to the eraser tool again, and it's still on that hard brush, which is for perfectly fi fine because with splatters, you can just erase with a hard brush and it really doesn't affect much if you don't cut anything in like half. All right, so that's basically the look I'm going for. And since when we finish this Lightroom, there's gonna be light from the top. So everything below is gonna have uh, a darker look. We wanna add a bit of a gradient on here um, so that it has that dark to light look. So I'm just gonna go ahead, gradient overlay on that layer, and I'm just gonna put it at 100%, click OK. You can see it goes from darker to lighter, which is kind of what the cleat does as well. And <clears throat> we'll get to more splatters uh, soon, but we want to cover the boot layer uh, for now, or the cleat or the product layer, whatever you want to call your layer. I named it boot. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer above that, and I'm going to hold Alt or Option and just click that layer so it becomes a clipping mask. I'm going to go to my brush and uh, I'm actually going to flip this to white and make it black. Uh, I'm going to keep that green up just in case I use it later on. And I'm going to go to a soft brush. Come on. And I'm going to increase the size a bit. So I'm at about 600 and I'm going to click here, hold shift and go across. And what that essentially is going to do is add a bit of a shadow on the bottom of the cleat 
which is again going with the effect of the lighting from the bottom and the darkness um, from the top. So I could set that to overlay or something like that if I feel uh, so inclined. Um, and I think I will actually. So I'm going to set that and drag it up a bit so it affects a little more and then put it on 67. I actually like the overlay look for shadow. A lot of people don't, um, but I do think it looks pretty good in this case. Not all cases, obviously, because uh, you might get different things. But um, for the white, I actually don't. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create another new layer. Same thing, alt click. And this time we want to have white brush. And I'm going to make this a little bigger and boom. Add some light and let's just set that to like 73 opacity and that's that's the light on the boot which uh, obviously we have light already at the toe area but the top part didn't really have any light so we added that in and we added more of a light to fit our needs in this advertisement all right so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that splatter layer right click it and copy the layer style and I'm gonna go to the very top layer and go ahead and create a new layer and let's make sure our green is selected and let's go back to our brush that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the back part of the cleat. Um, so essentially the idea behind this was the splatters are going to come off from all sides. So I got the left side of the boot. Now I want to get the back side of the boot and then I'll get the front side towards us um, after this. So let's go ahead and Maybe like that. I actually like that a lot. Uh, mm. That stuff a little bit. That's a, a little better. We can. We'll do that. All right. Let's go ahead and erase all of this. All right, and then we can right click and paste that layer style that we just copied and we get that effect. Now let's go ahead and create a new layer again and let's get the brush and let's try something a little different. Maybe the bottom is that, I'm not really liking that. Where is, this is kind of, I like this upper right hand corner. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase this all. Voila, and let's oop, let's actually right click and paste the layer styles in. And one thing I did for this layer that was different from all the others was add a bit of a drop shadow. So if I double click this layer, add a drop shadow, I have the settings as multiply, 25%, 30 degree angle, distance of 18, spread of seven, size of eight. Obviously you guys might not be doing this step in the first place, but if you guys just wanna learn another technique, here you go. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna set that drop shadow, and then I'm gonna right click, rasterize the layer, and uh, that's good and dandy. But the shadow just looks a little off in my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Filter, Distort, Spherize, and just uh, I'll keep it at 100. What the heck? And it's gonna just round it a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the size so nothing really changes and click OK. There we go. That's essentially the splatter effects done. Uh, now we want to clean up the lighting a little bit. So let's create a new layer again. Go to the brush. Let's set this back to black and white. Um, I don't really want the green until the text, which we'll play around. Uh, let's get a soft brush. Keep it fairly big. And of course, I did not keep it fairly big. And <clears throat> let's click and make some light. So you can make light many ways. You guys might have your own way to make light. This is just how I'm gonna make it light. Um, so I got about almost 2000 pixel brush. Clicked the very top, just so it's that overhead light. I'm gonna set it to overlay and make it about, uh, there will, it depends how hard you want your light. Like this is pretty good opacity in my opinion, but I kind of am going to make it a little duller because that's what I did originally and the original product turned out well. Uh, I don't know if I really nailed the overhead lighting in, in the original one, 
Um, so you could probably play with this and get a lot of different options. And I think Rated did a tutorial um, that I will also now link in the description that had uh, a different variation of lighting. So you can check that out and play with that if you'd, uh, if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, get a brush, and this time we're gonna make it a lot smaller. And we're just gonna add some light spots throughout this piece. So maybe one there, one there, and maybe one like here. And we're gonna set that to overlay, and again, about 28% opacity. Just to add a little bit of variety in this piece. All right, so we're getting towards the end. We wanna create a new layer again, go to filter. Now we need the colors to be black and white again, because we're gonna make some more clouds. Render, clouds. And we're gonna set this to screen. We're gonna get the eraser tool, and we're just, oh, we're gonna make sure it's a soft brush. And we're gonna go ahead and go around the edges here, leave the bottom part, and then slice right through the middle and erase the top part. So now we have some smoke at the bottom and we're just gonna decrease the opacity of that. So it's very subtle, about 10 or 11. I have 11 right there. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to about eight. Yeah, that's much better. Um, and that's just like creates a cool floor look. Uh, I like the smoke at the bottom. I think it just looks really nice. Uh, like that, I don't really have a real explanation for it, but I think it looks, like it looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and add some text. So we're going to be at the top layer again. I'm going to go to my text tool and I'm using Devil Breeze Demi because it's pretty close to like the Nike font. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do Nike football. Let's increase the size a little bit. Command J to duplicate that. And let's size it down just a tad. And bump it over to the left. Just offsetting text looks good on ads as well. And I'm gonna make it say real super fly. Actually, I'm gonna put a space in that one just because it looks odd. And I put the space in the wrong place, of course. And I'm gonna decrease, decrease the size a little bit. All right, there we go. Um, also, we wanna pull up the Nike swoosh. So here's the Nike swoosh. I'm gonna just drag that into Photoshop. Um, actually, I already had one here, but whatever. And bring that in here. Command-I to make it uh, white. Size it down. And if you don't have your rulers up, you can do Command R and just bring this into the center and it should click and actually it clicked on the Nike Swoosh. Actually, I'm going to go to the bottom, click that. Oh, I already have a, uh, well, I already have a ruler or a guide already up, so you can see that. But if you select that layer, you can bring it out and it will click into place right in the middle. So with that Nike swoosh, we're gonna center it. Maybe make it a tad smaller. All right, Command H to hide the ruler. And let's set that to overlay. Let's go back to our text. And let's see, I'm gonna make that. Uh, so I'm gonna select the Mercurial, press that. I'm gonna select the overlaid Nike sign as the color, click OK. And let's select Superfly, and let's get the green. Okay. And same thing with the Nike football part. Nike football is going to be... No, oh, come on. Okay, it's not going to do it. Boom. Click OK. Oops. Set 
that. All right. Boom. There's our text. There's our ad. Looking pretty good. There's one thing we forgot though, and that is the probably the most important thing, which is the color correction. And I did a very simple color correction on this one. Um, essentially, I only added four things. So let's go ahead. Make sure you're on the top. Um, obviously, I have everything in a group here. So I'm going to go outside the group to create the color correction so I can know it's separate. Um, just, I don't know, that's what I do. But let's go here and add, uh, we'll start off with the Vibrance. So go ahead to Vibrance and let's do 12 Vibrance and about 8 Saturation. And let's go ahead down here and let's go to Curves next. And I'm just going to go to the top-ish part, bring it down, and go to the bottom part, and line it up straight. And yeah, that's about good. Let's add some brightness and contrast. We're not going to touch the brightness, but we're going to add a contrast of about 10. You can see that brings out the dark background a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and add a gradient map, and this might be the only thing you don't have. Um, but this gradient pack is everywhere and the color is Vintage 16. So I'm going to select that, put it on Overlay. And we're going to put this at 22% opacity. And boom, that is our product. Uh, one final thing I did do was duplicate everything in the folder minus the color correction. Command E to merge it all. Command J to duplicate it. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, set it to about 2, got the eraser tool, went full size like this, erased, brought it down, erased the text, selected it, or selected both layers, Command E to merge them, and then finally if you want you can duplicate that layer again and go to Filter, Sharpen, Sharpen More. Uh, if it looks really too sharpened and weird, like, like mine kind of does, you can decrease the opacity a little bit. And there's your final product. Um, so that felt like a long time. I don't know really how long that took me. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. I know I explained it kind of uh, like in a weird order, uh, but I did it in an order that I could remember it in. So that's why it was like that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, leave a like. Uh, again, 100 likes, and I'll put the PSD to this in the description. And let me know what else you guys would want me to do. I'm probably going to do a few more of these ads and things like it because they seem to be really popular nowadays. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.